y there is English translation. Thank you, Mr. President. Allow me first to welcome Mr. Kim Sung Hwan, Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Korea, and to thank him for presiding this important meeting. I also welcome you, Mr. President, my colleague, Ambassador Kim Suk, in presiding uh, the work of the Security Council, I welcome the foreign ministers of Rwanda, Azerbaijan, and Brazil at this important session. Mr. President, I have listened carefully to statements made by delegations that have spoken before me on this important issue, the protection of civilians in armed conflicts. I find it necessary to underline the following fundamental points. First, I'd like to thank all those of good intent who have taken up the crisis in my country, Syria, and have uh, set forth uh, constructive viewpoints on how uh, to protect civilians in Syria from the consequences of the crisis shaking the country. As for others, other colleagues who took up the crisis in my country from the uh, prism of mere criticism and accusations left and right, I would like to stress that their governments are an integral part of uh, the creation escalation and expansion of the crisis in my country, whether uh, through coercive unilateral sanctions imposed on the Syrian people or allowing uh, uh, for departure of their own citizens, fundamentalists and terrorists and come to my country, Syria, through open borders under the noses of every single intelligence agency in the world, or allowing such terrorists to cross Syria's uh, borders with neighboring countries, or through arming, funding, and giving succor to such terrorists and advocating for them in the media. The ideal way, Mr. President, to protect civilians in armed conflicts, to avoid them bearing the scourge of war, lies fundamentally in preventing armed conflicts and adopting peaceful means to settle existing ones and holding those governments that have and continue to initiate and incite such conflicts accountable. Furthermore, uh, the issue of protecting civilians in armed conflicts will not be set right unless there is strict respect for the principles of international law and the provisions of the Charter of the United Nations, notably the principle of respecting the sovereignty of states, sovereign equality among states, and non-interference in the internal affairs of states. It is utterly unacceptable for such an important issue to be dealt with in a discretionary, indeed selective manner, or in a way that strips the issue of its content, 
and makes it so loose that it can accommodate so many forms of abuse and misapplication. The experience of protecting civilians in Libya is still fresh in our minds. One of the most important principles of sov sovereignty, gentlemen, is that the state has the exclusive and primary responsibility to protect its citizens. This is a fundamental rule of international law, one agreed upon by the founding fathers of this organization. Practical experience has proved that the issue of protecting civilians in areas of conflict or unrest has been used as a pretext to serve intrusive and sus suspect agendas and the interests of certain states that work to aggravate and manipulate tensions. Indeed, the practices adopted uh, by uh, the governments of some of those countries have drifted away from the most fundamental principles of international law, of human rights, and uh, uh, international humanitarian law. Ladies and gentlemen, we have started witnessing fevered attempts to market political propositions that do not enjoy international consensus, such as the so-called responsibility to protect and humanitarian intervention, which is being now marketed to uh, create a public opinion that can then pave the way for NATO military intervention in the domestic affairs of developing countries and to change their existing ruling governments. Mr. President, addressing the issue of protecting civilians in armed conflict must be done in a holistic manner one uh, uh, that uh, uh, condemns and holds accountable governments of states that support armed violence and terrorism and incite through the media uh, uh, for uh, sectarian provocation. It also means putting an end uh, to uh, acts by countries that infringe on the sovereignty of other states and their territorial integrity, indeed, that invade them militarily and kill hundreds of thousands of their people, uh, uh, displace millions of other citizens under the pretext of protecting them. Protecting civilians also requires uh, not subjecting them to suffering, a slow death by depriving them of the necessities of daily life, such as food, medicine, fuel, and others, through the imposition of unfair, unilateral, coercive measures by uh, some uh, countries, measures that have been confirmed as illegitimate by the United Nations. On this occasion, my delegation would like to renew the emphasis on the need to provide protection for civilians languishing under Israeli occupation in the occupied Arab territories, including the occupied Syrian Golan, as well as an end to aggressive practices by the occupying authorities towards them. Despite our opposition to the exploitation by some delegations of the subject of our discussions today and reflecting it on the regrettable events that Syria is witnessing currently, let me point out that caring for Syrian civilians, uh, if serious, cannot jibe with the policies being pursued by well-known Arab regional and Western countries that boast publicly about providing arms, funding and training as well as safe haven to armed terrorist groups that cross borders uh, and target the Syrian states in all its components that take uh, uh, civilian populated places as a base for their terrorist operations and use civilians as human shields. We believe that concern for civili Syrian civilians uh, cannot be expressed uh, through sponsoring terrorism or extremism or derailing efforts towards settlement or uh, through exerting pressure 
in order to undermine any possibility for an inclusive national dialogue that alone can enable Syrians to restore security and stability and determine their own future through a Syrian-led political process among Syrians, as stressed by Security Council Resolutions 2042 and 2043 and the Geneva Communique. Mr. President, there is a difference between protection of innocent civilians, a noble task, and the protection of insurgents, terrorists, fundamentalists, those uh, uh, who uh, recruit children, those who fire at civilian aircraft and uh, diplomatic missions, those who mainly target the very safety of civilians and destroy the state's infrastructure, an infrastructure fundamentally built to serve those very civilians. The Syrian government is continuing to carry out its constitutional duties in protecting its citizens from acts of terrorism and sabotage. The government is working to restore security and stability. It is doing its best despite unilateral unjust measures and enormous pressure to meet the needs of its citizens to provide shelter for those forced by the distressing events and terrorism to leave their homes and to facilitate their safe return to their homes. The Syrian government has also provided all the necessary facilities for relevant United Nations agencies, including OCHA, the Red Cross, in order to help in this regard. Furthermore, the National Committee of uh, Investigation of the current event is continuing its task to ensure that those uh, proven to have been involved in acts of violence are prosecuted and held accountable without any exceptions. Mr. President, in conclusion, the uneth unethical political trading in the situation of Syrian refugees the organizing of media press conferences only to announce pledges that remain unfulfilled in most cases, those are not consistent with the effort to protect civilians or indeed the fact that many of the countries announcing pledges of donations uh, are themselves the basic reason of the displacement and suffering of those refugees. In conclusion, Mr. President, Let me say that the, the arrogance of the Israeli representative has made him fall victim to the illusion that Salah al-Din al-Ayyubi or Nabuchat Nasser or indeed Abraham Lincoln or Gandhi or Simon Bolivar are him and that his country's acts of aggression uh, and occupation, the repression of uh, Arab peoples, uh, are an example to be followed by all member states. He misses the, the fact that the resources spent by this international organization to discuss the very means of ending Israeli occupation and aggression have uh, taken from this organization and this very Security Council millions of work hours, hundreds of resolutions. However, the Israeli uh, uh, representative, uh, with his ignorance and his arrogance, now believes that uh, his uh, country's policies are above the Charter, above uh, the uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights. He also believes that uh, the so-called international community must thank Israel for its occupation and aggression and that uh, it uh, must lionize uh, Israeli terrorism against uh, uh, Arabs uh, and uh, in the occupied territories. Gentlemen, Israel aids funds and gives safe haven to uh, takfiri uh, extremist fundamentalist uh, uh, groups that uh, work fundamentally uh, from the Golan.
Israel is an integral part of those acting uh, to use and abuse uh, the crisis in Syria to perpetuate the occupation of Arab land and to prevent uh, uh, forever the creation of a Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as its capital. Thank you, sir. I thank the representative of Syrian Arab Republic. Uh